hey everybody what's up welcome to the first ever feats of strength video today i'm going to walk you through how i put disc brake tabs onto this vintage steel nishiki mountain bike frame What we've got here is some of the things that we're going to be using today. So obviously the steel frame mountain bike, the fork. I'm going to remove the old cantilever brake posts from the frame and add a new set of disc brake tabs. Put a support brace on the front of it and also add disc brake tabs and an extra a little bit of support here to the rear of the frame. I strongly recommend using the older mountain bike frames over newer steel road bike frames. The tubing's a little bit stronger, a little bit tougher. It's gonna be able to withstand the forces of the braking, any sort of weird heating that you might get through the welding. This is what I'm gonna be using for the modification. It's an Avid BB7 mechanical um, disc brake caliper. So we've got some new 160 millimeter SRAM rotors that are going to go on to these brand new Shimano center lock hubs front and rear. Just going to unbox everything, lay it all out, make sure that we have everything we need. I am just now realizing that I am missing the lock nut to hold the rotor onto the hub. But luckily I've got this bin of takeoff bike parts here. We'll see if we can find what we're looking for. And uh, yep, got it right there. It's actually for a cassette, but uh, anyway, it'll do the job just fine. Handy to have one of these bins around. Secure the rotor to the hub. Doesn't have to be crazy tight, just nice and snug. And we're going to run the skewer through it so we can get it mounted up in the fork. I'm actually going to be using the whole rotor hub assembly as the jig for attaching these disc brake tabs. Uh, it's important to make sure that the rotor does clear the fork. Checking the gap right here, giving it a couple of spins, and everything looks good. Now we're going to repeat the process with the rear hub. Same deal, hook up the rotor grab the frame, drop everything into place. Just gonna take a second to make sure that the hub is centered in the dropouts, give it a couple more spins, and everything looks good. Next up is to remove some of the paint. I'm using a wire wheel here attached to my grinder. This is great because it's not gonna remove a lot of metal. It's just taking the paint off. We gotta get everything really clean for the welding. I'm not too crazy worried about keeping this really neat and tidy. Um, the frame is gonna get powder coated after we're finished with all of the fabrication. I'm gonna take off these cantilever brake mounts and get those cleaned up. So we'll take off the wire wheel and put a cutting disc onto the grinder. It's important to just be really careful, just cut off the cantilever mounts, leave a little bit of, leave a little bit of steel on the frame. We'll come back and clean that up later. Cut off the other side. And now I'm switching over to a flapper disc. I've got it on a secondary grinder. When you go to grind the remaining steel off of the frame, be really careful to not dig the tip of the grinder in. Uh, we're gonna keep it as flat and parallel with the bike as we can, doing light rotation, gently removing a little bit of material. You don't wanna remove too much material from the frame itself. Everything's looking really nice and smooth. We're gonna keep continue the process with the other side of the seat stay and switch over and do the exact same thing on the front fork. Again, just light, slight passes, a little bit, keeping it flat to the fork. And there you go. Everything looks nice and smooth, very clean. Not gonna see a lot of grinder marks when we go and take it to powder coat. Since we're doing the fork first, we'll start with the correct adapter for the front brake, front 160 mil rotor. And also got some fresh brake pads in there, got them pretty centered in the caliper, centered the caliper onto the adapter itself. Just wanna get it all aligned as dead center as possible. 
caliper is what we're going to use to attach the disc brake tabs. The Avid BB7 is really nice. You can dial in the pad adjustment. So I'm going to give this a couple of quick twists here to clamp it onto the rotor. And now we can spin it into place. Once we have the caliper where we want it, I'm going to grab some cardstock, make a quick template here for the disc brake tabs. This is going to go onto some 3 16 plate. So just grab a Sharpie, mark out where the holes are and the back of the fork and the adapter. Once everything looks good, cut out the template really quick and using a metal scribe, I'm going to transfer this over to the steel plate. Uh, I find it really handy to drill out all of the holes before you cut anything out. This is nice because you can hang on to the excess bit of steel. You don't have to worry about trying to manage a really tiny piece and drill holes in it. Just take it nice and slow. After the holes are drilled out, I'm gonna grab the caliper and make sure that I got everything lined up correctly with just a quick test fit on the adapter. And then cut it out with the cutoff wheel. Now I'm just going to go back with the flapper disc and do a little bit of cleanup, take some of the edges down, and I'm going to take the scale off the sides. Go ahead and put the caliper back in place and check the overall alignment. You can see we got a little bit of a gap here in the middle, so we'll come back, clean that up, give it another test fit, and everything looks pretty good. All right, now we're ready to weld everything in place. I'm going to be TIG welding everything today. You can totally do this with a MIG, whatever you've got one small tack at the top and one at the bottom and then I will remove the whole assembly and get the fork set up in a spot where it's comfortable to do all of the welds I am not going to weld it continuously I'm going to do it just a little bit at a time giving the steel an opportunity to cool between each weld. That way it's not getting too much heat. Otherwise it might pull the disc brake tab to one side or the other and throw everything out of alignment. The entire process gets repeated on the rear of the bike. Nothing too special here. I'm skipping over a lot of it because it totally is repetition. Make a template, cut it out, weld it on, away you go. The next thing that I'm gonna do is drop in uh, a little bit of a disc brake support here. This is just a simple piece of tubing. I've already cut it and coped it so it's gonna fit into the frame nicely. I've got a couple of fabrication magnets here in the shop. They're really handy for holding small pieces like this in place. Grounding clamp on here. Do a couple more tack welds. I'm actually tacking towards the rear of the piece of tubing. This is going to help it pinch itself into the back of the frame. Every time you weld, the metal is going to want to move in the direction of the weld. And if I weld it on the front, it might pull it away from the frame. It just helps me with my overall fabrication. All right, we got everything all done. Uh, off camera, I did add the extra little fork brace on here, just another small piece of tubing and a couple of small welds, and onto the rear of the bike. 
Always remember it's fun to reduce, reuse, and recycle. Old steel bikes are a perfect way to do that. They're everywhere. Steel's easy to modify, really forgiving. Um, again, it's kind of a freak bike project, so it's okay if it's a little bit rough around the edges, but overall, I'm really happy with this. Cut out some special decals that are gonna go on the bike after it gets powder coated on my vinyl cutter. Everything looks great, happy with the project. Just need a little celebratory beverage. Encourage you guys to experiment with stuff like this on your own. Grab a steel frame, grab some parts, get a welder, have some fun. Till next time.